our rabbis say that uh, Abraham and Sarah lived in a tent that had no sides because they were so hospitable, there were no sides to their tent so that anyone could come in and feel welcome. There were no doors and no walls. Um, and so that notion of hospitality, of welcoming someone into your home and being able to sit next to them, to share tea with them, uh, without that sense that we all must uh, be exactly the same or that we have to uh, follow, you know, believe exactly the same thing or speak exactly the same language or drink our tea in exactly the same way, that we can still be welcoming and hospitable, that I think is a very important concept. Um, I didn't experience, and I think it's hard to experience that sense of hospitality in a big university because there are so many people um, and you don't necessarily need to do that because you can separate yourself more. At a small college, that notion of hospitality is ongoing, it's constant. Um, and there is really uh, no place that you can go and just cut yourself off and say, I won't be part of this community. We're more like a family with only 1,300 students and with uh, 150 professors and with staff members. We all know each other, we all uh, participate with each other, we share tea. Uh, and welcome each other to the table um, all the time. One of the things that really struck me when I came to Austin College was how much the students expected that. One of the first things Larry and I uh, did was we had a dinner at our home and we invited leaders from various student organizations. And we invited students from the various multicultural organizations. So we had the chapel students and we had uh, the Asian Student Association and the Black Student Association and the Muslim Student Association and their leaders came to have dinner at our house. And we were having dinner um, and at one point um, a young man, uh, a young Muslim man came up and tapped me on the shoulder and said, excuse me Dr. Haas, um, it's time for us to make our prayers. Is there a space we can use in your house to go to go make our, our prayers together? Um, and I said, this is a moment to be hospitable, right? This is a moment where I can practice that. And what was really moving to me was that this young man was used to living in an environment in which he felt absolutely comfortable and expecting of that hospitality. So he knew, he knew I was Jewish. He knew he was in a room with lots of Christian students and all, you know, all different kinds of students. But he felt absolutely comfortable in asking uh, for this. And I, of course, felt absolutely comfortable in making a space available for him so that that could occur as he wanted it to. And um, there was not a sort of ripple. And that just told me so much about this community that I was coming into and that that sense of hospitality could really be felt. And it was very different than most of the communities um, that I had been in before, where, again, you might have sort of off in a distance seen somebody engaging in a religious ritual that was unfamiliar, but it wasn't that there was that comfort level of saying, how can I make this thing which is important to me in the midst of this community? It was also impressive to me, those boys didn't say, I can't come to the dinner because it will overlap with the time I need to pray. They, they felt that they could still come and be part of a larger group and also make space to go and do that. And the other students totally supported that. There was not a sense. And so that was just, there are very few places, I think, in the world where that kind of interaction could happen. And it was really uh, powerful, very powerful to me. We have found the same thing um, on a small college. I don't know if you've ever been on a small college campus, but the president, we live on the campus, and our house is very busy with students coming over and faculty coming over and all sorts of things. Well, they'd never had a Jewish president before. And so um, when we explained that we're going to be hosting and hospitable and inviting people in, but oh, there's no pork in the house and no shellfish. And you all know, we're newcomers to Texas too, but pork is a big deal in Texas. And um, it's a, it's a, I won't say it's hard for our community to not have pork at our house, but it's, to think about they have to think about it exactly you know so just those sorts of things but we have found that we received that hospitality too and that people were very willing to say what is it that you need how can we uh, make you feel at home in your home and how can we feel at home here too it's, it's really a remarkable thing so hospitality I think is very important another concept that I wanted to speak about 
is something actually that I learned from Protestant traditions. Um, this is something that I, I learned about from uh, uh, others, but also that I've spoken about with, with Chaplain, uh, Chaplain Williams, with John. Um, and that is the notion of accompaniment. And this, I think, is a particularly Christian notion, but one that has been very interesting for me to learn about. Um, and it's a notion of being with and being next to somebody as they are continuing on their journey and witnessing that journey. Not necessarily becoming one with them and taking that journey as well, but witnessing the journey and helping them complete their journey. Um, and that also, I think, is something that is very meaningful. If we can find ways um, in which we can, as educators, uh, as the president of a college, say to a student, what matters to me is, while you're a student here, is that you move forward on your journey to God, or you move forward on your path. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same path as the person next to you, but I can accompany you, I can be with you, um, and I can cheer you on, and I can support you in the difficult parts of that, and I can hope that that journey goes well and safely for you. Um, and that notion of accompaniment has also been very powerful for me in this past year as I've thought about what is my role uh, as president of a, of a college that has a lot, mostly Christian students. And I do feel my job in part is to accompany them. It's not to share their journey exactly, we have different <coughs> paths. Um, but it is to be next to them and to be willing to witness, um, not just from a respectful distance, but up close, holding hands, to be able to witness that journey. Um, and that's not something that I had had a lot of experience with in other parts of my life either. Um, and finally, one more concept. Um, you know what, before I get to that concept, let me say that the... Um, the witnessing and the accompaniment is not always easy. It doesn't mean that there aren't hard places where we have to grapple, uh, where we have to debate and think about it. Here, here is a perfect example. Um, we have some uh, young women coming to the college uh, next year who cover their hair, cover their, cover their hair. And they are concerned about living in a dormitory. All our students live in community. They live in you know, apartments or dormitories on our campus together. Um, and, and these women, young women were concerned that even um, they what might not feel enough privacy in their floor of their dorm, um, you know, would, could they be in the hallway with uncovered hair? Would somebody take a picture and post it on YouTube? And so, right, you know, how young, I mean, you know, that's a good worry. Um, and so how can modesty, I, I don't know, the Hebrew word for that is sneas. I don't know if there's a, or the Yiddish word, is there a word for modesty? Is that, the, I don't want to be... I mean, is that an okay word to use for that modest? But their, their privacy and their modesty to be preserved. Um, and so we started, I've been having a conversation about do we want to say, well, we will set aside a part of our dorm floor or a wing or a you know, part of our student apartment complex and say, this is just for women who cover their hair. Now, it doesn't mean they'll all be Muslim. We may have religious Jewish women in there. We may have other um, young girls uh, from... Christian traditions that have a, a more of a modesty tradition, but it does mean that we would sort of be making that separation. And we have not yet found the answer to that. I mean, we're really, that's something we're, as a community, we need to wrestle with. What would that mean to sort of have that separation? Would that be a good thing for our community? Would it be a difficult thing? Are there ways that we can respect modesty without maybe making that separation? We don't have an answer to that yet, but it's the kind of thing that we have to wrestle with. I think what for us at Austin College, the commitment is, is the commitment to stay in that conversation together. To not just say, well, we can't work it out, so too bad, everybody will have to, you know.